so welcome back and it is absolutely boiling hot today um, but I have here the uh, old paper dial Smith's alarm a new dawn that I've um, shown in a previous video maybe a couple I can't remember at least one previous video has had this in it and um, yeah I haven't done anything to it and I think this is a perfect time to just do uh, a series like a service series on just a normal typical Smith's alarm clock apart from the dial uh, I don't really have another Smith's alarm clock that I is ready to service that you know is just a normal one like this so I may as well take this opportunity to just do a normal typical Smith's alarm movement service when I say service what I mean is disassemble, clean and reassemble so that it hopefully works better than it does right now. And if it does work better than it does right now, then I will consider it a success. So uh yeah, I mean so it's, it's a nice um item, I suppose. Uh this is actually my favourite design with the um bottom like this the new dawn I think the model's called and this one's from nineteen fifty four. But yeah, let's just dig into it I suppose. And we have a bezel on the front which is pressed on from the out outside, unlike um, the later ones and uh, West Clocks, for example, they have the uh, bezel sort of inside the actual rim, but these, these ones have it on the outside. And although it, you might think it's a bit odd to have it like literally on the outside where all the paint is and everything, it does make it look nice from the side, because on other models you probably can't see that the uh, chrome on the edges so um, it adds a bit of trim and we have the glass which has a crack in it but I don't, don't have a spare although I did spot some on eBay I might think about getting those I don't know, let's see I have a lot of clocks uh, without any good glass in them and um, to just find a big load of glass like that which will fit all kinds of alarm clocks will be really really useful so yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these hands off. Uh, yeah, Smith's alarm hands are not tight at all. They aren't usually. They just, you know, you can pull them off with your fingers, I suppose. If they're not, then you might want to use screwdrivers or something. But the hands that should come off are these two. But the hour hand, you don't need to take that off. Unless you're going to clean the dial or something. You can just do that. But sometimes people fold over those little tabs, so you might want to check around the edge just to see if any of the tabs have been folded over and they're keeping the door from coming out. And um, yeah, that might be why it won't be coming out. But yeah, the dial itself is a pretty unusual. Um, they're not, I wouldn't say they're scarce in any way, but just because they're abnormal compared to the usable Smiths, uh, you see before 53 and after 54 or something. The, the only ones I've seen date from between uh, December 53 to, um, what's my horse one? I think that's um, 954, I think, 549. I can't remember. But it's um, 53 to 54 anyway. Maybe even just late, like December till something. So it's not a very long period of time where they had these paper on metal dials. Uh, and it's a shame. I mean, this is a terrible example. It's got rusty and it's uh, a bit oily and it's yellow. But um, I really like the sort of glossiness it has. Because the aluminium ones they usually use have a matte finish on them. And they uh, have a very little reflectivity to them. Which actually you might think is better because a light shining off a dial like this, as you can see with the number three, you can't see what that is. But um, I do like a paper dial. There's just something more... Uh, warming about them and uh, they all get worn out in different ways I suppose and then we have the front of the movement here um, I'm just gonna go around the back because we need to get the movement out I'm gonna undo these winders by turning them in the direction opposite to the ones shown by the arrows and all the controls on the back of this look original which is pretty unusual because on these uh, earlier ones, 
well, not super early. This is a sort of middle-aged one, really. Uh, the alarm knob is a larger one. It's larger than the time knob. And you don't see many where it's still got that, because a lot of the times they fall off, and the ones they replace them with are the later ones where they're the same size as the um, time-saving knob. And, yeah, you're probably going to need to use pliers or sockets or something to remove these nuts, but, um... Because I've done this before, I didn't want to do it up so far that it scratched the paint, so I just did them finger tight. And, uh, like that. And then we should be able to pull out the old thing. Pull that out like that. And it should be a hunky dory type situation. So yeah, once you got that out, you'll probably see something like this. Sometimes the bell would have been removed. It wouldn't. It's not supposed to be removed, but I have seen a couple where people have actually taken the bells off of them for some reason. I'm not sure why. Maybe to give because it, without the bell, it's not very loud at all. It's basically like a a very quiet rack a tack tack, um, which I will show you now. So because uh, I think the alarm works in this one. That's with a bell. And probably better off using sockets or um, some of those parallel pliers or something to remove the uh, nuts on this movement. I don't really have those, so uh, I'm just using pliers, but they uh, are usually fine if you uh, get it with or without scratching them too much. Uh, so yeah, sometimes you just be left with this, which is it's louder than the tick ticking of the clock, so it's it's still some sort of uh, awakening type noise but it probably won't wake me up uh, so what have we got here well it looks like and I've just noticed this now someone has tied bits of string around there uh, I presume that is to make it easier to install but I'll be removing those because I don't think they'll be you know these aren't exactly hard so uh, I'll just start by removing this fluff because this is an atrociously dirty movement right here. Yeah, this has got all kinds of stuff on it. Ugh. Yeah, you probably want to wash your hands after seeing this. Wash your eyes. There we go. Yeah, probably clean the parts off individually. So yeah, as you can see, it's working. However, it is not working that well, because if you look in the um, pivot holes, oops, I'm just going to use this hand to point with, uh, right there and there, even the end of the hands are rusty, that's strange. Um, yeah, these two in particular always get very, very dirty, and I assume that is because they're basically open to the elements. Because they didn't have any kind of dust protection on these, uh, that hole there literally is where that is, so it always sort of looks like it's got a dirty mouth and uh, there's always a lot of dirt around the um, uh, orifice holes of the um, back but yeah, looking at the front, front plate, we can see it's got the old style sort of arrow slit type um, thing with two holes either side and it's also got uh, a sort of a spring with little round notches in it which is um I don't think that was there for very long because before this they had their more conventional uh, alarm spring I wonder if I've got one to show you uh, I think I have a Smith's alarm uh, movement plate, plate in here uh, is this it? aha here it is right, this one um, Someone had, I, I, this wasn't me, this was just in a box of parts, um, but someone had drilled out the um, uh, pivot there, and I'm not sure why that is, I think maybe, I mean I'm not a professional, so I don't really do any of this kind of work on these movements, but um, I think they might have wanted to rebush this and sort of gave up, so they just drilled out the old pivot and decided it wasn't worth it or something, and they just discarded it, which is a shame because these early movements aren't all common, all that common. I mean, the clocks are, but um, whether, you know, whether people recognise what's in them or not, 
um, and are worth keeping. I think they are. I think all old alarm clocks are worth keeping and selling to me. And you can see it's got the older um, cutouts as well. Because I think these were made in a different factory. And there are subtle differences here and there. Uh, such as, as I've just noticed, it doesn't even have any slits down there. Uh, but yeah, that seems to be it. Although, I thought that when they started the new factory in Wishaw, because the old one was um, overcrowded apparently in 1951, it looked to me like they had just made a brand new stamp for these. However, I've never seen a later style one with this kind of thing, with a um, spring like that, but this has the holes for it. Uh, so I'm not sure what the order of things were, maybe they just changed everything else, but kept them the same basic design, just changed all the cutouts just to make it look more modern, I suppose. I'm not sure. But I'll leave that aside, and I've gone very sort of uh, off the tracks. Uh, so I'll get back onto that. Uh, so yeah, I think the next thing we should do is probably take this hairspring out. And uh, as you can see, it's a delicate business because that very fragile spring that's moving back and forth is very easy to bend. So you want to pull out this pin, it's like a little wedge, holding it in. You want to pull that out carefully. Sometimes it helps to just push it from the back, actually. Be very, very, very careful. Coming out. I don't want to rush it. Oof, there we go. And as you can see, it's a little wedge which holds the um, spring in. And with that spring unattached, we can thread it through the um, regulator lever, which is up here, this thing. So you can change the speed of the um, clock. And if you just keep moving it so it's free, then you can move the lever back out of the way. Look over here. And then I will undo the um, balance cup, which holds it in. It's like the bearing, I suppose. Pivot point. And there we have it. Old uh, balance wheel and hairspring, uh, which is a very delicate part. So, um, yeah, I'll probably leave this video right now, um, and then I'll look at removing the rest of these parts and getting this thing apart next time. So thanks for watching, and um, yeah, hope you find this interesting.